together. I've been down in Tucson with my good friend Dan and the Dry River folks the last couple of days. It's been a real treat. I'm so impressed to be up here with Denny's and uh, the reference to the Denny and Elton Anarchist Alliance of Presidents. I know it's not just the stand against the pigs a couple of weeks ago here, but even deeper than that, the connection we're developing in depth and in other places in the state. And I want to share more of that on my weekly radio slash video broadcast, because uh, I know it's inspiring other people as well. Got some of these if anybody wants to get a little re-overview thing. Get off the table. What is Queen Anarchy? Also known as primitivism, neo primitivism, and upper primitivism, and the civilization, and all the rest of it. I just want to throw out a few things, a few points, a few questions, so we can get on to discussion and arguing and throwing the chairs. So I really feel that there are grounds for optimism, I think there are grounds for an opening for us. It's been a while. I mean, I always tend to look on the optimistic side of it and do right for that. But there are some things that we could look at just very recently, I think, starting with some of the things that are more superficial than others. For example, and they're not unimportant, the disillusionment with Obama, I think, is pretty much complete. The debacle that everybody knew was going to happen a month or two ago in Copenhagen, the uh, climate summit, the fact that a few days ago the Supreme Court just open the floodgates of corporate money into the electoral process. I mean, I don't have any respect for the electoral process per se, frankly, but these are ways of showing that, as Dan said, it's more about promising anything, projecting a rosy future, American dream. All that stuff has been completely dumped because nobody would, nobody believes it. Nobody, you can't sell that. It's more, this is where it's at. This is it. Better get on board or you're done. It just, it's just about that brutal. In, in the same sense, I think, as the fact that there's two million people in prison here. A society that's losing its ideological support falls back on, on coercion, on just an ugly threat or, or the, not just a threat, but the brute exercise of force. That's not a sign of a, a, a system in the assembly, that's for sure. And people are working more and more. I thought uh, <clears throat> technology was going to ease up on that. But as Marshall Sollins said, talking about prehistory in his book, Stone Age Economics, he pointed out that the more culture, meaning symbolic culture you have, the more work there is. And I don't really understand the thinking behind that, but I think it's evidently true. It's, you know, it's a very fact, I think, in terms of the whole record. And by the way, mentioning Stone Age Economics, and especially the first bit, which is which is well known in anthropological circles, the original affluent society, I think it's worth a mention because he pointed out that if people's needs are met, even if they don't own anything, they're not poor. And on the other hand, referring to modern society, if people's needs are not met, no matter how much they own, they're not rich. He was kind of reversing the whole thing to a sense of value and even of satisfaction in society. The original affluent society, and you could say the only affluent society, referring to prehistory, referring, referring to the time before domestication and civilization. And we could throw in, not only that, but the original society in sync with the natural world, and the only one, has been, and even the original anarchist society, and the only anarchist society. Free politically uh, operate on a face to face basis in banned society where people took responsibility for themselves and each other. In the which is face to face, there isn't any other uh, community worthy of the name, I think. But the lies are everywhere, of course. My partner and I were in Bombay about a month ago on a three weeks tour, and there is an anarchist presence now in India just beginning which is quite anti-industrial and anti-civilization. We saw a billboard there from a steel corporation. We make green steel to contribute to the ecology. 
green steel. That's pretty good. The steel factories are, of course, adding or perfecting the environment. They're salvaging the environment. <laughs> but it's just for the, the uh, incredible amount of lives. We see that probably in every country, certainly in this country. All the bullshit about green and sustainable, it's just, it's just really, uh, the wire thing's getting so much worse so much faster as we, or as we were told to make a fetish of all these little practices, these personal consumption things, they actually amount to just about zero in the big picture in terms of, in terms of energy or water or anything else. I, maybe we get into this thing on my side, but frankly, is Avatar. And I agree with Layla Abdel Rahim's review essay on the subject. And if you want to check it out, I think it's a really worthwhile five page thing at miltsov.org, M I L T S O V. She makes the case for that big Hollywood blockbuster as a anarcho primitivist work, a story. I think there are flaws, very definitely. Last part of it, the white savior, action hero guy, that's. But I don't think that really basically damages the main part of it, which is there's a life and death struggle. Civilization is going to take every damn thing and kill anything in its way. By the way, that's exactly what the real avatar is in India and certainly else going on. They're burning the villages. The out of office, they're slated for destruction, and that's going on right now so that they can get in their mine and, and build dams and all that, and it's no movie. You know, talking about anarchism, talking about our own milieu, it's well known, it's not always directly addressed, and one can be too simplistic about this too, but I think there is a real split going on. There are really two sides. One is the side, and I am generalizing here a lot, the classical traditional leftist anarchism, which hasn't changed really from the 19th century, Industrial life is fine, or technoculture is fine, domestication, mass society, it's all fine. But if we self-manage it somehow, it will be different or something like that. Maybe somebody wants to make the case for that. The other part is the factories are the problem, self-managing them is not going to be the answer. And as Engels wrote in a challenge to anarchists in 1873, he said, well, your anarchists want freedom. Step into the factory and tell me which these two ways. You can adjust your concept of freedom to fit the factory, which is what anarchism did. Or you can say, well, you're right. Better get rid of the factories. <laughs> Better get rid of mass production, mass production society, mass consumption, mass culture, everything that comes from that. And we know everything that comes from that. There's no, there's nothing that hasn't been written about it. There's nothing, I mean, it's no secret. The incredible estrangement, the, uh, just, you know, just the whole, it's been known since the 19th century when Durkheim wrote about industrial life, industrial cities, in terms of suicide, mental health problems, all the rest. I mean, it's only got what somebody, is there something we've overlooked about mass society and, and what we could just change it a little and it'll suddenly start to more. And another part of the, I think maybe kind of drifting around in the middle, I know I'm leaving a lot out here, which is why I like the, the Cosmo Council approach of being open and taking what you need and not being ideological. And that is a problem because primitivism is already an ideology. And that's, you know, ideology formation is a problem in the first place. How do you keep things open and fluid, keep working on questions, new questions? But it just happens that way. That's no excuse. Now, for example, I'm a primitivist defending the primitivist point of view. I don't really want to do that. That's really not the point. And we, I was about to refer to the insurrectionary thing, which is pretty popular in North America and in Europe, and I think probably other places, which is something we should question as well. I like rhetoric as well as the next person. I get turned on by it, the absolute, unlimited, uh, you know, immediate, uncompromising, total revolution in this instant and all that. That's great. Sign me up. But, you know, rhetoric alone, you can turn on the rhetoric machine. Been around so long, I've heard a lot of rhetoric. You know. It's not enough.